Ready. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Newark Municipal Council's uh, special meeting and conference meeting. Mr. President, in, uh, in the absence of a quorum, let's begin the conference meeting. And uh, I, we have a councilman on his way that will, will give us five. The, the conference. The first item on the conference meeting is a, this is a recreational use of cannabis by Newark law enforcement. Uh, Director O'Hare is here and uh, Mr. Stewart, gentlemen. Director, who wants to go first? Morning. Both. Good morning, Councilman. Morning. Mr. Ramos. Yeah, Mr. President, I, I, I did not ask for the director to appear before as we, we sponsored the resolution at All the right. last meeting. I did have a conversation with Director O'Hara subsequent to that. So I'm not sure who made the request for him to be here, but we should allow him to make a statement right. or do a presentation to us regarding the department's policy on the um, a cannabis issue for off-duty officers. Sure. Good morning, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have a brief statement uh, from the acting attorney general uh, he gave me last night, I'd just like to read. He's releasing it today. This is from uh, acting attorney general uh, Platkin. On April 13th, in response to numerous questions my office received from law enforcement chief executives, I issue a memo outlining police officers' rights and responsibilities as codified in the Cannabis Regulatory Enforcement Assistance and Marketplace Modernization Act, CREMA, which allows for the legal sale and use of cannabis across the state. The April 13th memo simply reflects the letter of the law, including how it impacts police officers, and does not in any way go beyond the plain text of the statute as written or the regulations that the Cannabis Regulatory Commission has issued to date, nor does it reflect a policy position I have taken. In my capacity as New Jersey's Chief Law Enforcement Officer, public safety is my top priority. To be clear, I share the same concerns being expressed by some elected officials, legislators, and others with regard to the off-duty use of legal, legal cannabis by police officers. So the, the concerns, obviously, that we raised with the Attorney General um, are based in the statute itself. Um, and, and what I found um, significant is the statute itself actually references the New Jersey Police Training Commission several times, particularly where it's talking about having a standard set uh, for folks who are then able to determine whether or not someone is impaired under the influence of, of cannabis while they're at work. Um, so. Uh, I found it troubling that almost that, that this issue was not considered because they even mentioned the police training commission in the statute. What we have done is we've issued a directive to all of our personnel um, reminding that, them that until further notice, all personnel are urged to be cognizant of current federal law and regulations, strictly prohibiting the use or consumption of cannabis and to be mindful that the use or consumption of cannabis or cannabis products may directly impact their ability to purchase or authority to carry a firearm while off duty, may violate the terms of federal security clearances, may prohibit them from serving on a federal task force, as well as the terms of commercial vehicle, vessel, or aircraft operator licenses. We've reminded everyone that the police division shall continue to maintain a drug-free and alcohol-free workplace, which prohibi prohibition includes marijuana or cannabis, whether regulated or illicit. The use of cannabis items or intoxication by employees while on duty is strictly forbidden, and there remains zero tolerance for an employee found under the influence on duty. Moreover, those division members with on-call status are reminded of their responsibility to be, be prepared for duty at a moment's notice, which includes being free from any type of intoxication. If there is reasonable suspicion of an officer's use of cannabis while engaged in the performance of their duties, 
or upon finding any observable signs of intoxication related to cannabis use, including following a work-related accident or incident subject to investigation, that officer may be required to undergo a drug test and may be subject to discipline up to and including termination. So essentially, what we're focusing on at this time is trying to maintain the status quo. Um, the, the statute is the statute. Uh, we are awaiting the Attorney General to issue a revised guideline on the uh, drug testing policy for law enforcement in New Jersey. Currently, the, the police department, all police departments in New Jersey are required to drug test at least 10% of its sworn members uh, annually. And that drug test does include, still includes marijuana. Uh, so obviously that, that's something that the Attorney General uh, will have to address. Um, but until such time where we get further guidance, this, this is the situation that we're in. Mr. President. Yeah, I just want to thank Director O'Hara for um, providing us with information uh, consistent with the order that he issued for the police division. I think it mirrors, um, you know, a lot of the provisions that were included in the resolution that the council supported. And, you know, for me, it's it puts our officers in a very um, difficult position because the state has, um, you know, legalized the use of cannabis recreationally. Uh, but the federal government still recognizes this as a, a legal substance mm -hmm. and consistent with federal law, which governs the rights of individuals to legally carry uh, a weapon. Uh, it clearly states also in that provision that those individuals who are authorized by law to carry a weapon cannot um, utilize an illegal substance, which marijuana is still considered at the federal level. I'm also encouraged by the fact that our police unions have also issued memorandums to their members um, mirroring what Director O'Hara's uh, order uh, just stated as well. So, you know, this is definitely a work in progress. I know the governor's office has received calls from mayors all over the state of New Jersey, uh, other elected officials as well. And, and I'm hoping that at some point the attorney general is able to issue a further clarification on this on this particular situation, which does impact uh, officers not only in the city of Newark but throughout the state of New Jersey. Well, thank you. Other questions, Councilman Gonzalez. Uh, the Senate President said the other day that uh, we don't want to take a slippery slope, uh, prohibiting something that the law allows. Mm -hmm. uh, assuming that the federal government were to to approve the use of marijuana or legalize the use of marijuana, if, uh, let's say for recreational purposes, how are we going to, in that event, prohibit the, let's say the officers to use it if the federal government determines that anyone can use it? Yes, sir. I agree. Uh, even, even without that at this point, in terms of policy implementation, I mean, this is, this is a nightmare, honestly. Mm. Uh, the, if the state law says that officers are allowed to do that off-duty, marijuana remains in your system for 30 days. If an incident happens, if we have reasonable belief that someone may have been intoxicated, that person is going to be terminated. They're going to have to try and make that argument at some point down the road. I mean, there, there are, and the statute speaks to, uh, drug recognition experts and, and a training program um, that's approved by the Police Training Commission. The, the state police in New Jersey are, are the only ones who offer that training, and they are completely inundated with requests from across the state. Um, it's just, honestly, I, this is just something that we're just not prepared to implement, but it is the law. Is there any uh, reliable method of determining that someone is impaired? Let's yes. say I'm driving down the, down the road and you pull me over. Is there a way that you can determine that I am impaired? There, there is a specialized training for that, drug recognition expert training. Um, but the, the numbers of, of folks in this state, officers in this state that are trained to that is, is very, very small. Do we have any? We don't have any. If we had an incident like that, we would have to request 
uh, and see if the state police had someone available that could come assist us like we do for, for, for other, you know, specialized assistance that we need. Um, but I, I spoke with the, the Lieutenant Colonel yesterday who runs this and it, they just, it, it's, it's difficult right now to get the rest of the state certified in Alcotest operators because, you know, COVID had all of this type of specialized training shut down. I mean, this is this is an, an incredible challenge. Yeah. Thank you, Director. M Mr. Question. President, Ramos. I think Director O'Hara raised a very important issue, which you know I've heard about from different mayors around the state, is is the liability issue, which falls squarely on on municipalities. <laughs> um, you know, unlike alcohol, as Director O'Hara stated, you know, someone may not be necessarily impaired by the use of of marijuana. They could have smoked it at home on a Friday night and two weeks later, if uh, an, an incident happens, whether it's a car accident or police involved shooting and the attorney representing the victim calls for a blood test, that blood test could show that that individual still has, um, you know, marijuana in their system and the potential for liability for the towns and municipalities around the state, unless they develop a better testing mechanism, which is always possible um uh, is definitely great so that that's definitely one of the concerns that we've heard from mayors and and elected officials around the state and our resolution does does say that in the event that the federal government legalizes then you know the cities should reconsider their position on, on the ban any other questions no. thank you director clerk the next item on the agenda is the American Rescue Plan grants. Uh, Business Administrator Pennington, you have the floor. Council members, through the clerk and directly, a copy of the um, most recent status of the ARP funding, the $88 million in the first tranche that we have received Approximately $48 million of that has gone to offset uh, budget losses. The rest of it, the other $40 million or so, um, I'll go through the list and uh, uh, answer questions uh, that you may have. With respect to uh, summer youth, um, $500,000 was budgeted, $300,000 for ARP auditing and compliance, $534,000 for broadband and internet upgrades, arts and cultural programming is $500,000, uh, COVID-19 preventive measures, $2.9 million. ARP universal basic income, $3.8 million. Parks and recreation upgrades is $1.45 million. Uh, small business assistance through the economic development services is a half a million dollars. And small business uh, assistance from through, through various other mecha mechanisms is also uh, $3 million. ARP Workforce Micro and Entrepreneurial Development is $1.79 million. Public access upgrades are $1.9 million. Affordable housing, $2.1 million. Uh, city cleanliness, $450,000 um, in one tranche. And another uh, excavation and demolition has been uh, $1.8 million. Homelessness prevention is at $7.2 million. Uh, the Greater Newark Visitors Convention Bureau received $500,000. The Parking Authority received $500,000. Um, Invest Newark uh, has been budgeted for $3.3 million. The Office of Violence Prevention, $1 million. Uh, many ward grants are at $180,000. Uh, we acquired fire apparatus and, and used ARP funds of a $1 million for that. Vaccine incentive gift cards, $50,000. Um, isolation and quarantine uh, services at Robert Street Hotel, $700,000. The North Ward FQHC uh, has been awarded $1 million, 333000 of which has been um, uh, distributed so far. Nourishing Newark also received $1 million. And uh, technical assistance for the program is at $300,000. Water and sewer infra upgrades, infrastructure upgrades are $1.75 million. Uh, which comes out to a little over $40 million budgeted from the $88 million. Mr. President. Yes, Council Ramos. Yeah, to, to the business administrator. So, so funds that may, do you still have the opportunity to reallocate funds that could go unexpended? 
yes, funds that have not been spended. They may be, there are certain funds that have been encumbered, yeah. but are unspended. And if they're not spent uh, within a reasonable time, we can certainly reallocate those. And there are there's another uh, tranche of funds that are pre-encumbered, and the directors have been told that they have to spend it by by a time certain, or they will be reallocated. Yes. Yeah. What what deadline are you giving the entities that you've decided to fund? Uh, generally, generally June, but it is flexible. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a moving target, but we expect to reallocate funds by June. Could you make the council aware if there are opportunities for reprogramming down the road? There, there, well, I can tell you now, there are opportunities okay. for reprogramming generally in the categories that are listed here, unless there's some specific area uh, that you want to bring to our attention. I'm happy to look at that. Because I see some special improvement districts benefited from um, these funds and, and a number of like the neighborhood improvement districts did not. So I know yes. the, the Tourism Bureau got money, um, but you know, the Mount Prospect Partnership, the Lower Broadway, Bloomfield Avenue, uh, not sure if they even applied or they're aware that they can apply. Yeah, the, sh the shorter answer is, uh, well, two things. I guess it's not gonna be as short as I, I started to say is during our presentations early on at the beginning of the pandemic, when we first got the money, uh, there were several discussions about monies being available. The only SID that applied was the Greater Newark Business. Uh, and they were, and I could see the impact in their revenue based on hotel stays or the lack of hotel stays during the pandemic. So the entirety of their funding comes from a tax associated with, uh, uh, you know, hotel stays within the city. So yes. Thank you, uh, Eric, for the presentation. Sure. You're welcome. What's OBP? It's, it's Office of Violence Prevention. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mark? The agenda. R5. We now have a, conf a, a um, quorum. Mr. President, in accordance with the New, Jer New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, Adequate notice has been provided to the Star Ledger, the Jersey Journal, and to the public at large, establishing the date, time, and location of this meeting. We have a roll call of those present, please. Present. 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 Here. Here. Mr. President, the first item on the agenda is ordinance on public hearing, second reading and final passage. Six PSNFA is an ordinance granting a five-year tax abatement to the two-family new construction at 319 Lafayette Street. Is there anyone present that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Oh, hold on, Mr. President. Before we go, um, the business administrator wishes to, to has a letter from the mayor that he wants to read to the council at this time. Let me do that. And Mr. B.A. Um, Council President, uh, Eric Pennington, Business Administrator. Uh, I have uh, before me a letter from Mayor Baraka uh, that I have sent to the each That's council me. member uh, through the clerk and directly. And with your indulgence, I'll read it now so that you and the public are all uh, able to hear what he has to say and something that should not be done in a closed session was a public comment about uh, public comments that took place at the last meeting. Uh, dear Council President and Municipal Council, it is with disappointment and somewhat confusion that I write this open letter. As you are keenly aware, we execute bids, RFPs, and RSQs regularly. The process has not changed and it is bound by public contracts law. In order for us to have an open and fair bidding process, we are required to publish bids in multiple newspapers and we have contracts with those newspapers to do so. We advertise those bids and we send bids to those that may request them as well. There is a particular period of time that the bids are out for public consumption. Once that period ends, all bids that are received are then reviewed by an independent team throughout several departments. They check eligibility and pick winners based on a given criteria. They do not confer with one another while grading, and the highest graded or lowest responsible bidder is chosen. In some cases, it is a request for qualifications, and this is also evaluated, evaluated in a very similar manner and uh, 
top organizations are chosen. All of you know this process very well, and you also know that it is unlawful for the administration to interfere with that process or lean towards one vendor over the other. There were statements made at the last council meeting about the award of violence prevention grants that were knowingly false and egregious, but were nevertheless allowed anyway. All bids, whether they are for SALT or insurance contracts, are evaluated the same way. We have never held ward events or meetings to advertise or push this process. However, I actually have been announcing this process for months on Facebook Live and through the Newark People's Assembly and Office of Violence Prevention have held information sessions, online speaking to our violence prevention grants that were and are being made available by the city. There have also been state and federal awards given to Newark-based organizations, and there were no aspersions cast over these particular grants or those awarded. My guess is that they didn't serve a particular political end or the folks didn't pay attention to them. If the council wishes to begin to change our process and begin having award meetings on all of our bids, then you should articulate that, or even if you are just interested in particular ones. If you have specific vendors or organizations that you think should be involved, it seems appropriate that you should make these organizations aware of our process and get them engaged in it. The particular bid in question had over two dozen organizations respond from local to statewide organizations. What troubles me the most is that instead of saying he was ignorant to the process or the grants themselves, this gentleman made it seem that this was being about not including Latinos. Not only is this a lie, it is slanderous. The body knows it to be a lie and stayed silent in his face or even furthered it. This gentleman did this in front of children, dragging them into this charade when he never even applied for the grant. Maybe he thought he should be given resources anyway without doing what everyone else did by law. He also disparaged very real organizations that do serious work in our city, some recognized by the state and federal government, selfishly teaching our children division and foolishness for political gain or personal favor. Our city is experiencing a very real problem with a rise in youth violence, despair, and depression. There are very serious-minded organizations out here who are partnering with the city to tackle these problems and have materially helped us curb violence in our city. They have been doing this without resources, and these grants at all levels of government are designed to further and expand their work. Demonizing these organiz organizations like the fox and the grapes is just flat out wrong and at best ill-informed. I believe these organizations should get a chance to present their side to this body as this person was allowed to disparage their names. This is not an opportunity for the city to pass out money to anyone who wants it. It is an opportunity to keep our children and families safe while supporting the groups that can truly intervene, prevent and triage a small population of our city that is causing major detriment to our neighborhoods. At minimum, if he was so interested in this grant, he should have applied. Or better, we should make sure our constituents are aware and not use this forum for political theater. I'm sorry I could not address this body in person as I was doing a ribbon cutting for affordable housing with Queen Latifah. Sincerely, Raz J. Baraka, Mayor. Mr. President, yeah, I, I, I really have to respond to, to the letter. Um, Excuse me. This, yeah. Let me just, um, speaking. I, I, I just want to state that, you know, the fact that because Mr. Avila is registered to speak at the last meeting, um, which is his right, uh, it's um, the impressions being given that it was orchestrated in any capacity because he happens to be Hispanic and you have three Hispanic council people. You know, I, f I find that offensive. And then secondly, um, you know, none of us were aware when the RFP went out for the violence prevention program when, hold on, when Mr. Aviles had made, has sent us a letter via email concerning the, the, the application, I had offered at a few council meetings ago that we should consider hosting a session for these non-traditional groups who are interested in applying for funding from that program in the future, you know, have, give them an opportunity teach them the process, educate them on the process. You know, at no point was that offer made to fund one particular group, but it was done in an effort to try to, um, you know, answer any questions about the process, open up the process to groups who, who may not have had the opportunity the first time. And, and what baffles me is that, 
you know, the mayor has a lot of important people who sit at these meetings. And the fact that you all can't communicate to him um, facts versus what people may say behind the scenes, you know, it, it does bother me because we have asked for a number of meetings proactively to host these seminars, to, to educate these groups, and for him to interpret this as some kind of political attack or a setup or that Mr. Avila's presentation was orchestrated, um, you know, bothers me and it baffles me. So I just want to state that for the record. Thank you. I have nothing further. The, the record from uh, Mr. Avila's comments is open, is public. He identified uh, individuals who he thanked for having him come to the meeting. And uh, with respect to the request to have meetings, um, I agree that Councilman Ramos did ask me to make sure that we provided opportunities for other uh, entities to be aware of grants. As I indicated to Councilman Ramos, for the $19 million grant is forthcoming, we'd be happy to do so. We weren't in a position to share all the particulars yet because it hadn't been finalized. And that was the only reason why we had not yet had those meetings. I believe they have now been scheduled and your office has either been notified or will be notified uh, as to when those And I even offered to, to host one so that I could um, invite some of the groups. And, and I just want to verify for the record that Mr. Aviles was registered to speak at the meeting, correct, Mr. President? That, yeah, he, he, Mr. He, Clark. he was not registered to speak at that meeting. He apparently was registered to speak at a prior meeting and didn't know that he was uh, supposed to come to that meeting. And he showed up at another meeting and there was a request to change the order of business to allow him to speak. That's what took place at that meeting. Mr. Clerk, anyway. you spoke to Mr. Aviles that day, right? And Mr. Aviles came to see you. Yes. About that he had, he had it in his app. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I thought the kids were here to get an award from the city council when I walked. Yeah. In. And that. then when um, I think uh, council president realized that they were registered to speak, I think the intention of putting them putting them up at the beginning of the hearing of citizens was that they had, I don't know, 40, 50 kids here that day, so. Well, the council agenda was published. It's public, it's still there. He was not on the list of speakers. Anybody can take a look at it. People in the audience who are hollering now can take a look at it. It's public, I can't change it, but it is. We'll go back and send hey, Mr. Clark. All right, all right. No, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Clark. We're under, let's go. Um, Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on the five-year tax abatement for 319 Lafayette Street? Alicia Austin Singleton, after I speak to Mr. Pennington and the mayor, who says shenanigans and foolishness of what an, 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 a resident comes to express. Ms. Austin, Mr. please speak to the ordinance. Please 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 I will speak to the, to the ordinance. ordinance. We done spoke on tax, five year tax abatements for, for, for two and a half years via Zoom. You, can, you know what I'm gonna say about tax abatements. It is disrespectful for the mayor to say foolishness and shenanigans about a resident. Now, if none of y'all are gonna say it, I will. Ramos came up here and said, for the residents, are we willing to give out five-year tax abatements? Let me say that again, tax abatements. We get, we're willing to give those out, but to give the community something for the children, we done exiled the North Ward, again, going on Patrick Council and his trunk of treats, okay, on your ticket. So you see, you see the pattern here? But Ramos asked about it. Eric Pennington came and said, Everyone was notified. Nothing. Ramos said. Excuse me, the top. We got. We got to speak on the tax. tax abatement. Since you want to keep him saying tax abatement, you want to give that out. So, since you want to give that tax abatement out, Ramos said, "Why wasn't I notified that no one from the North Ward participated? No one from the North Ward was participating because you didn't send it. Stop lying. You gave it to the anti-violent coalition." With all those all right. people out there, not, that's who you order. gave the money to. Alicia, you're out of order. Tax we to the ordinance, I want to keep please. giving out tax abatements. Let me let, tell y'all this. Let us stick to the ordinance, please. I, you, you're going to have, there's a 30 minute period where you could do that and speak on that. So please, let's just stick on, let's speak on the ordinance, please. Five, your tax. Tax abatements. Abatements, please. 
With the tax abatements, with all the crooked deals on the tax abatements, I'm surprised Eric Pennington haven't came up here and said those two family homes that's being converted into three to four family homes on the tax abatement agenda. I wonder why he hasn't said anything about that or Mr. Mayor haven't came and said that those residents was trying to get over was trying to get over when they were supposed to be building two family homes, when they were building three and four family homes, and, and land was supposed to be designated as two, to build two family properties. But see, we could change agendas and do what we want to when it's our friends and family plan, but guess what? Somebody's going to jail. I'm gonna have the best pre-Mother's Day or post-Mother's Day gift ever. I will have the best one this year. Somebody is going to jail. And let me, let me show you where it's at. Across that hall right there. And it coming. And it's starting with the housing authority. Hello. Hello, hallelujah. I told you they coming. You didn't want to listen to me. I just took a trip to DC. If you don't believe me, I'll send you the pictures. Good morning, America. Next speaker. Lisa Parker, um, Mr. B.A., what happened to the public bidding laws? What happened to that? I'll you up here ordinance. justifying Ms. whatever. Ms. Lisa, you must speak to the audience, please. To the audience. Tax yeah. abatement. Tax um, abatement is a privilege. Tax abatement, you don't have to enforce. Why do we have people with no oversight that they are putting um, for sale signs, for rent sign on property that don't even have a CO. It's on the agenda today. I'm gonna talk about that. But the unfairness of this administration to continue to want other people, the public, the council, to hold, hold law and order when they've been operating lawlessly over these tax abatements and who they give it to. Let's talk about the tax abatement, 300,000 from the city, 400,000 from Invest Newark for one of your fan favorites across the street. How is that legal? No answers. Ask Mr. Pennington, give us a justification for all the people that have been receiving it and why no one has access to these properties that you've given tax abatements to with your friends and your family. Lawlessness. And you wanna talk about Mr. Aviles? It isn't germane to the North Ward or the Latinos. Mr. Aviles and his, his crew came to the church to give out water it, it was, to the seniors Lisa, and the people gotta, in the community when me. you all sat up there and lied and said you got to talk to the ordinance please please to the ordinance take back on for the next minute i'm talking about tax abatement and the lawlessness of this of this administration that somehow always come to the table when the mayor get embarrassed and called out for who he's giving these grants to Let's, let's call it for what it is. Equity and fairness for all, not for just your select group that's in your clique that kisses the dawn, dawn's ring, sign a loyalty pledge to get what they want, but you got nothing for the residents. No apology came from Pat Council when he said, fuck the North Ward about some damn candy. Please. Do not use that language here, please. And it publicly. No, please. We're not doing this today. Leave Mr. Avilas alone and give him the money that him and his kids deserve. Never saw to city of Newark worry for the people. First, let me say, uh, Quintana, that the ACLU letter instructs you 
on what you can and cannot. If somebody wanted to spend their entire three minutes up here cussing, it's their constitutional and legal right in a public forum. Now, you need to go back and look at that. If we mention this tax abatement and we talk about what we want to talk about, we have the liberty to talk about whatever we want to talk about. So you have to stop interrupting us and turning off mics. The ACL, you done told y'all. Now, if they have to step in here and like lay the smack down, then we'll call them. But you need to stop this. You do not have the right to tell us what to and what not to say, especially if we're quoting one of your officials. It's what it is. This is our legal and constitutional right. So stop turning off the mic. Stop telling us what we're supposed to say. That is not your job. So please go back and read that letter or reach out to the ACLU. Please. Now, I'm going to talk about, again, we'll start here with the tax abatements. Nobody's checking the storehouse. Nobody's checking up on these people. Because like we've been telling you, and even in one of the meetings or, or, or several of the meetings, Ramos even brought it up about these properties. Who's getting them? What are they getting them for? Why are we giving them at these prices? Why are they selected? These are all questions that you're asking each other and you never come with any answers. So then when we ask you, you get upset with us. But we're, 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 somebody has to keep you accountable or hold you accountable because you're just running them up. And then for this disrespectful mayor of yours to come in here or send a letter because he didn't come himself. And I saw the truck outside. Right. Oh, I saw that on the news this morning, too. You understand? So you can do all of this public, you know, forums about what you're about to do in the city and build affordable housing and all of this and give out abatements for this stuff. But when Mr. Avilas comes up here and he named all of these organizations who were not up to snuff, their paperwork wasn't right. And he, he talked about them receiving money. He named them, named them that you can fact check yourself and you want to bully Mr. Aviles because he was here with his children, cops for kids who are being trained in doing something productive because he didn't receive the funds that he should have received. And again, your colleague on many occasions has said to you, we need to have meetings where this is made known to everyone. We've said it about these properties. We've said it to Director Ladd. Can we get a list? Can we, because everybody's not getting these LOIs. They're not getting them. I'm telling you, I'm in these streets. I'm, I'm talking to business owners, people who want to start businesses, who are given the, the, the no good properties. When, when, uh, and then we get people from New York that's going to come here and get the prime properties and run a little man out of town. Are there other speakers? There's one other speaker. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the age, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to end evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Again, with regard to these five-year tax abatement, who cares about the abatement? Who cares if it's an exemption? Newark Matters, what we care about is for whom are these properties um, really built for, for? Whoa, I ended in a preposition. For whom are these properties really built? We, as Newark residents all of our lives, are saying to ourselves, especially in, in, in my situation, I'm on a fixed income. So everybody that's aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, or it's people that are on fixed incomes have no access to all of these properties that are being developed. I'm trying to figure out why aren't, I'm talking to you right now directly, corporate counsel, why are, th are there's no provision in these ordinances for all of these properties that say, if you are on a fixed income, you have a certain percentage to have access to these properties. Now, that's, that's, that's our issue. Why are we, being, are we being discriminated against because we're disabled? That's rhetorical, of course. So, so the disabled and people on fixed incomes are being dis discriminated against because they don't have the money City, uh, city clerk, because the people that are getting these properties are the people with the money. Right, city clerk? Now, people that are on fixed incomes, people that are, are under the poverty level, people that are, can't afford these are being discriminated against because they're poor? Because they don't have the money? Is that what I'm getting from the city of Newark? Corporate counsel, um, is there a way that, 
I'm talking directly to you, corporate counsel. Is there a way that in the future you can incorporate where all of these properties that are going up are being developed, that there's a provision that says very clearly, if you are on a fixed income, you have access to this by this route or by that route. I don't understand why we are being discriminated against because we're disabled or because we're on uh, a welfare or because we're under the poverty level. We're just living day by day on a minimum wage. Is that what I'm getting from the city of Newark? The discrimination for the poor? Is that what I'm getting? With regards to all of this development that's popping up around us? Oh, you're poor. You don't have access to it because you're poor because you're disabled. You don't have access to this. This is only for the people with money, right, city clerk? Isn't that what, is, that, is that a direct quote, city clerk? The people with the money. So Bezos, the guy that owns, the Bezos can come in and take over the whole city. Dion McCutcheon, oh, the guy that just bought up Twitter. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the age, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Nera El Bumani. Council, your responsibilities once again. Legislate, investigate, and appropriate. Right? We ask you to legislate and investigate tax abatements, right? So residents, what's an audit? An independent audit is an examination of the financial records, accounts, business transaction, accounting practices, and internal control over your funds. We been coming here asking the council over and over and over and over and over and over and over for an independent audit. And it seems like they don't even want to budge. Do you wonder why, residents? Ask yourself, why they won't budge to investigate and audit a tax abatement or the tax abatement program to do an audit? on these uh, agencies that's receiving them. It's a crying out shame. We had a, a um, tenant rights meeting and what's going on with the tax abatement building that you gave funding for 173 million to and another tax abatement that guard inspires. It is abomination that we got recordings on the management there Padlocking people doors. Do they supposed to do that, Council? MacGyver? Central Ward Council? Do these people supposed to still get a tax abatement with their REACT 66 scored? Do they supposed to get a tax abatement with rats still, leaks still there? La Monica MacGyver? We got recordings. We went in these buildings. We went in the in, in apartments. We got pictures. Do they supposed to get a tax abatement, MacIver and the rest of the council? To the to, to the administration. Ida B. Well said the ones committing the crime are writing the reports. Corrupt breed and more corruption. That's what's going on here. It is long overdue to redirect funding to other agencies. Thank you. Long overdue. Thank you. Next speaker. The other speakers? And I, who we can Mr. Other speakers, Mr. Clerk. No other speakers. Most motion Council to close President. The public hearing and adopt Council President. The whole. Yes. Before we move Council on, Coleman. I know we weren't, it wasn't a general comment but i um will comment about it any resident who is having issues at garden spires any complaints that you have please contact my office directly at 
733-5871 directly. Or you can email us at centralward at ci.nork.nj.us. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Clark, this is a vote. I'm a former. Oh, no, 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 excuse me. Tenant You're president. You're out of order. Excuse me. And God. also. You're out of order. You're out of order. That's good. We're on a roll call. Excuse me, Your Honor, we're on roll call. Please, I'm asking you please to sit because we, you already spoke. Please, please. Take your seat and that's it. Next speak, uh, Mr. Mr. Clerk, roll call. Roll call, Council of the Whole. Amador, absent. Crump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. Callum? Yes. Absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne? Absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. Continue, Mr. Clerk. B is an ordinance granting a five year tax abatement to the three family new construction at 217 219 Fairmont Avenue. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak on this ordinance? Someone appearing? Felicia Austin Singleton, Rough Riders, West War for Life. <laughs> I want to I want to know who is the developer or home buyer of this property. It is not a cop. It is not a judge. So Daniel's law does not apply. And let me tell you why Daniel's law does not apply. Because the councilwoman stated that she received letters, threats. But I received a letter from residents who don't know my address, who got it right out here out the council. You know why? Because the very number that I use for you to call me on is a bogus number, right, Lisa? It's a bogus number set up by text now. But that person called me on the very number that I gave you. So your Daniels law don't apply, okay? Because they calling me and I'll show you the letter. I will show you the letter. And by the way, you know what they said? Ms. Austin, you're doing such a good job. Stay on the council's butt. So my address and my name was given out. Why is the Urban League address down here on this Fairmont Avenue project that y'all claim y'all gonna transfer the deed and the tax abatement over to somebody else? Is that how it's supposed to go? I thought the recipient of the tax abatement supposed to apply for it, whether it was the developer and it stays there or the owner, they get the tax abatement, or the owner that's non-occupied, which they pay a higher tax percentage, one to 2%. Am I correct, BA and corporate counsel? Since you're supposed to be, supposed to be representing us. Oh, they work for me. You do not work for the Barakas. Let me let y'all know that in your duty right now. You are to represent the council and the residents of the city of Newark. So getting up here reading a letter from the, from the mayor is out of line. I don't need you to read no, mayor for, no letter from him when he up there with Dana. He over there with Dana and Owens. I know Dana and Rita very well. My kids went to Irvington High School. Huh? Don't read no letter that he put up here when we talking five year tax abatements for the Urban League. Why is the Urban League building up the West Ward? And you wanna know how I know that they building up this West part of the West Ward? Cause that's where I'm from. 12th Avenue and Littleton. Fairmont Avenue, Camden. So you go Camden, Fairmont, Littleton, 12th Avenue, where Rite Aid is. That's me. 6th Street. Then we got Bloods and Guts, 7th Street and, and 8th Street, where the liquor stores are. Hey, but somebody getting shot over there every day. But again, you want to get five year tax abatements to build that. Thank you. Thanks, Speaker. Tax abatements? It's wrong for us to call for an audit, ask you to do an audit on tax abatement when we got uh, 
Property managers scaring people into signing leases at Garden Spires? We got recordings. And let me let you hear it. You want me to let you hear it? And you and they supposed to get tax abatements? And we wrong, huh? Come on up. Pop on up. Pop on up. Whoever listening, lawyers, uh, civil rights groups, calling on all of y'all at God Inspired. This is what this is what the te- they do the tenants did. Okay? Police officers. That's who they should have called. Because that's who I would have called. This is happening at Guard of Spies, Monica. They supposed to get a tax abatement? Yeah, she was. She's not moving out right now. She wanna get it on the you a lawyer, right? Two lawyers over there. Is this legit? Is this legit? Is this legit? Two lawyers right there? PA, you a lawyer too, right? Kenyatta, lawyers. Lawyers over there, right? Is this legit? And we wrong? Are we wrong for coming here? Do this building supposed to still receive a tax abatement after hearing this? This, this explains to me. This. Okay. Uh, uh, this, this, this let us know. They lock somebody out, terrorizing them into signing the lease. Oh, this is supposed to happen, Monica. So this got to be a, a guard of spies resident to come up here. Someone who lived here 20 years? Are you kidding me? You want to, oh, anybody with, uh, who's from the Guard Aspires who want to call my office, blah, 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 blah. I am Guard Aspires, okay? I am Central Ward, okay? I am every ward in this city. Every ward. Because anything that happened in this city, I'm on the ground in every ward in this city. And we asking you from here, this point right now, for independent audit. I just explained to you what it what it means, what it's supposed to do. And what your job is. Investigate, appropriate, right? And legislate. Scratching your head. Great. Next speaker. Next speaker. Thank you. Council President, yes, I just want to reiterate again, any resident who has issues with eviction, anything that's happening at any, actually any uh, development here in the city, but specifically in the Central Ward and Garden Spires, like the last speaker just stated, please feel free to contact my office directly. And Ms. Bunami, you can definitely, I can't, I can't Excuse talk me. if you talking too. If you talking Excuse too, I can't order. talk. I can't Excuse talk me. if you talking too. You, you talk, I ain't talk at all. But now I'm Officers, talking, you talking. He needs to take his seat. I can't talk if you talking. Excuse me, you must take your seat. You're out of order. Councilwoman speaking. Let, sorry. Can't talk. I can't respond. You want a, you want a response, but you're gonna talk over me when I'm trying to respond. Like let 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 me respond. You y'all you say you want a response, right? But when I'm trying to talk, you talking too. You can't respond then. Can't respond if you talking too. If you would like, Ms. Bunami, you can also give us a copy of the recording that you have, the information that you have, and we'll take a look into it. We can't, we still, still Excuse can't, me. I still can't get a word out. See, this, Excuse this, me, you're this, out of this order. This is a pure example of how you say you want us to respond, and then when we respond, we're greeted back with disrespect, with you yelling back while I'm trying to respond to your comment. That's the problem. But we, but we, but you want responses, though. You can't respond if you, if you can't let me respond. Once again, if you like to drop off the information that you have for us to take a look at, to look at it, we'll also forward it to the tax abate. Still can't. Okay, thanks, Council President. Thank you. That's you my. That, that concludes my comment. Uh, excuse me. You, we, we gotta respect the. Spe- we, re- we listen to the speakers. You have to also listen to when we speak too. It's a two-way street. Please. Okay. Next speaker. Turn me on. Got you on. Lisa Parker. First of all, what's, what's 
disingenuous and, and um, just disrespectful that the people from Garden Spires during our virtual, for those of you that was here, called one right after the other to talk about the deplorable conditions in Garden Spires, the deplorable conditions they were living under. And the following week, the councilwoman, the chief of staff, and some of the other people was in the building knocking on doors to get their petition signed. How disrespectful is that? And hello, this is basketball season, right? Let me say this about four quarters. You don't wait till the fourth quarter in the last two minutes to decide you want to be a council person and responsive to the needs of the community. Because for four years, my community has been disenfranchised, disrespected, and not serviced in the way that we should. Because this lawless council here, administration, has bastardized our government. We no longer have processes. We no longer have respect for what should be done Eric Pennington, they got the answers for everything except for all the money that's going out of here that you ain't reporting on. The legal fees, all of the tax abatements for people who shouldn't get it. What kind of process we got? But once again, we got a BA that don't work for the, for the residents and we pay their salary. We got William Ball over there, Kenyatta Stewart, you know who you are, Corporation Council. It don't work for the best interest. We got Allison Ladd, the Deputy Chief. But yet, we don't have access to these lists. Jersey City is no longer given tax abatements. Suspended it. Bill de, de Blasio, when he was in New York, said, if you charge a market rate, you can't come and get a tax abatement. Bring your own money. Why are these developers coming here? Not only are we giving them money to do construction and tax abatement, but hell, the regular citizens that live here do not have access to these lists to buy the properties that you're giving away to people on Gun Hill Road in the Bronx. Franklin Lakes in New Jersey, Brooklyn, New York. Come on. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. One more speaker. Uh -huh. I had you run. How, oh, there we go. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters. Defending the age, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. I have to go to an aside real quickly. If you're having a problem, uh, Spires, with any your landlord, contact Newark Matters, and I guarantee you I'll handle them. Now, I'm getting to the ordinance. Just, just contact me. I'll take care of them. The, I got them. I should not have said it, not have said it. Again, Newark matters. We don't care if it's an abatement, an exemption. And we don't care about that. The developers, I hope, are being picked from the city of Newark. Blacks and Puerto Ricans first, they get the priority. I don't even know if that's even in a, a part of the requirement. They should get priority first. I don't know where the, these developers are coming from for these tax abatements or, and, and these properties. Newark should be first right, then minority second, and then outsiders last. By the way, I don't know if you know this, I'm just another aside or sidebar, however you want to call it. When I was in school, you know what the white guys from the outside used to call Newark? The, the armpit of New Jersey. The same white guys that you're giving these, that you're the guys with the money, city clerk, the same guys with the money used to call Newark the armpit of New Jersey. 
almost got punched in the face a couple of days. They almost got punched in the face a few times. But the thing is this. These are the guys that you're giving these properties to. Now, hey, Newark, yeah, we want to come and we want to be a part of you. We want to take advantage of Rutgers University and Seton Hall uh, Law School and Rutgers Law. But you're calling us the armpit of New Jersey and, you, and you're just giving and you're overstepping us that have been here all our lives to, to give these uh, three, uh, 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 three families and two families? Is, is, is that what I'm seeing? Maybe none of you ever went to school in Newark. I know he did. You never heard the white guys that are now trying to get in Newark say, Newark is the armpit of New Jersey. <laughs> and these are the guys that, in which you're catering. It's, it's, um, I, it, it, it's, it's throwing me a loop. My head just popped off and went to the moon. I hope it comes back down through the atmosphere. I don't know if it's gonna burn by the time it hits the Earth's atmosphere. But the, the thing is, you need to start, not you, corporate counsel, I'm glad you're back. You need to start writing these ordinances that cater to the residents of Newark who've been here all our lives. Instead of these white guys who I went to school with that now want to come to Newark and who called Newark the armpit of New Jersey. An armpit is not a good place to be, especially if you're an athlete. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions in the city of Newark. If you're having any problems with your landlord, uh, NewarkMatters.org. Next speaker. <laughs> Deborah Salt, the city of Newark. Warrior for the people. So, okay, these abatements, again, that, that we talked about. And no matter what we say, because you've already been told to vote yes on it, you're gonna do it anyway, right? <laughs> so, you know, the building that's being built on McCarter, right? McCarter and uh, Market, right? It's supposed to be shacks. And we talked about this last time when you all were talking about tax abatements. Oh, no, we asked. First of all, you asked yourself. You fought amongst yourselves. And then we're asking you, so do the people have to live here? We went back and forth through that, right? So what I know is the one that's being built there and they're about to build another one. As soon as they add the, ne the next three floors, they'll be done with the 33 floors. They're about to move to another one and build another one. It's a conglomerate that has bought these properties. So it's not a homeowner, right? Just like with these that you're giving abatements to, right? They brought up the garden spires. I was there as well. I saw the, the disgusting conditions. I was also there when you all came to sign, get petition signed, right after everything else from the summertime when we were doing the reports, taking the pictures, talking to the people, and they feel disrespected. So I understand, um, the other speaker's frustration and anger because that's what the people are expressing, right? Um, so to say call your office, a lot of them have said they've called, they've emailed, gotten no responses and things like this. So it is fourth quarter. We're like two minutes in, you got two minutes left, two minute warning. And now everyone wants to be on post. Not just you, but all of you are showing up or calling, oh, well, no, please call me and I'll show up. But this has been four years, eight years, and now, Two minute warning, we're going into the next election season and now people act like they want to respond. So again, that's the frustration and the anger. Um, but at this point, we, it's clear that no matter what we say, you're gonna say yes. Even when you break down the information about the tax abatements, especially you Gonzalez, you be given dates and facts and times. And, and I know I said you be, I did that on purpose, you be given. Um, you know, and then you'll turn around and say, yes, it's counterproductive, right? You're showing us that you understand what's being done, but then you vote yes anyway. So how does that benefit us, right? It doesn't benefit us. And if it's to show us that you're with us, that's not with us. That's showing that you understand, but you're with them. Because this is what has become the city of Newark versus the residents. But we are the city of Newark. You understand? Without the residents, you are governing brick and mortar. What? Who are you governing? And right now, the way things are being governed, it's not being governed to the benefit of the residents. So it is now our job to not vote you back in. And this is what I'm saying, like people pay attention to what has been done. The clerk and other speakers.
Well, no other speech, speakers motion to close the public hearing and adopt Council of the Whole. Roll call. Sure, absent. Crump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum, absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. C is an ordinance granting a five-year tax abatement to the three-family new construction at 221 Fairmont Avenue. Is there anyone present that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? We have a speaker before us. Can anybody look at that last ordinance? Can anybody tell me what that last ordinance address was? 215 or 217, 215. Then we go to 221. Can somebody Google that? You, you, you fast at it, Ramos. Google it for me. Because you know I mess them, them pictures up sometimes. But anyway, you got two newly constructed homes together. Then right on the side is an adjacent lot. Is the 221 the adjacent lot? Or is 217, 219, and 221 all put together for the Urban League? Did anybody see those two addresses? Because it just came up in my head. So when I read it, I Googled it. Did you do a BA or corporate counsel? Somebody is going to jail. I don't have a developer or owner to tell me why 215, 17, and 21, 19 all need tax abatements under the same thing. I don't care if they different lots, same owner. We're going to stop cutting. We're going to stop these shenanigans. Y'all giving money here, money here, but won't give it to the kids in the North War. Won't give a trunk a treat. Won't give a RFP notice. Won't give nothing. But then y'all wonder why us black folks, us black folks ride with anything other than black. You don't take care of us, and then you don't take care of the ones that take care of their own selves. The Latino don't need us. East Ward, North Ward don't need us. Stop playing. Stop playing with them Gonzalez, uh, Quintana, and Ramos. Stop playing with these fools up in here. All right, sir. What you going to do, sir? You know y'all not doing that. Stop playing with these fools. Because all they doing is ripping the black communities off. Well, guess what? The North Ward is being taken care of. North Ward could be a city by itself along with the East Ward. Put the, put the West Ward out there. We're going to sink. We're going to sink. And we sit up on the hill. Central Ward sit down. I could look downtown from where my house is. I could look down on the Central Ward. But guess what? Us black folks going to sink like a mug. Because y'all give me nothing but the Jewish developers and anybody else that come over here with a long trench coat on and a mask and, and, a, and, a, and a briefcase and say, here you go, you got a five-year tax baby. Not once getting them to come up here and say why they need one. What's the purpose? You got your money. You put your money. Pay your taxes. That's what they do. Jersey City said, you don't comply, you will not get a tax abatement. Go to these sites. If they don't apply, push them out because they're not applying. The man just came to you and said the Kruger Scott Mansion was not applying. Roundtree, who's running for office? Her people stuff ain't even in compliance. That should be the first one in compliance, Roundtree, but you want our vote. We will bust that, all, that, that whole at large. We're going to bust that up. Pat, uh, Roundtree ain't going up in there. I'm sorry. Next speaker. Residents, because we, we, we have no government. A uh, uh, new housing, five-year tax abatement for a new construction, three family. Now, one... Last time I came before the council, Barack, are you back in uh, the States, right? You had uh, issued, you know, uh, um, something towards the community on housing. You said that 
you wanted the one year moratorium on three family housing, right? You want a moratorium for one year on three family housing, which this is, until they designate land for low income housing. Right, Ras? You back in town? You watching? You listening? You sending notice down? Send one down about, you know, that issue that you, uh, when you was a council, South Ward Council. Let's put a one year moratorium on three family housing, which this is, right? Until they designate land. Are you designating land? For low income housing? Is this gonna be low income housing here? Whoever's buying this, because Ken said it's not on the land uh, bank, right? It's not being, anybody can own it, and they have to have money. And no residents live 34,000 income level below poverty. Is this rent gonna be for low income housing? Council? RAS? Administrators, because that's what he said as a council person. Now he's the mayor. He got more uh, bully pulpit, uh, 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 more uh, stuff to flex now because he's the mayor. He went from the council saying it and refused to be a mayor saying this about housing. Are you designating land, Ras Baraka? For low income housing here? Are you fast tracking that? Like you're fast tracking these uh, luxury apartments? You're at Queen Latifah. Is that going to be affordable? Because uh, I know Miss, I spoke to you at the one on the needed, well, uh, Gant, Jerry, right? That's not all affordable, right? You told me that, right? It's not, it's not, it's not there yet, right? Didn't you say that? You did say it. <laughs> oh, you, you're not going to say it. Next speaker. Thank you. Okay, tax abatements is a privilege you don't have to give it you could put a moratorium on it you could freeze it but let's talk about let's talk about the 155 jefferson street that school 168 million in renovation that we're leasing for 30 years that the taxpayers are going to pay um Last week, they had to shut them down without, without having permits. Let's talk about the $4 million that y'all asked for for Seth Boyden to mediate that property from asbestos, that the workforce is in there inhaling asbestos with no oversight of it. Let's talk about your attentiveness to my community as an elected district leader. You tore down Warren Street School, no engagement, no notification to the community. Built a 550 unit dormitory without engaging the community. The district leader did. No security plan, contractors coming in there, blowing dirt all over the place, no bait boxes. Y'all continue to not have oversight on all of the development. And then when people come here to you, because I thought how the process go, we have concerns and you follow up with the constituents. But what we've gotten for eight years is nothingness. Nothing from you, nothing in writing, nothing, hey, what's up? Some of you up there, y'all hooked me up. I'll agree to that and thank you for it, but I ain't gonna call you out because I don't wanna get you in trouble with the administration for working with somebody that's been a community partner and dealt with 
all of the council people for 20 plus years. This is disgusting that you have people representing us that have no foundation here, never represented anybody here, but all because of who they're affiliate with, they get a pass. Mr. B.A., how about you give us an accountability of Delicious D. Minas and all them other businesses that got, that was, ex that got money and the ones that were excluded. But Delicious D. Minas got it twice, double dipping. RFP. Oh, you over there shopping online for shoes. That's how BA at work. Uh, before I begin, oh, the mic's on. Great. Um, I want to make sure we're on C, correct? City Clerk, where are we with regard to the uh, agenda? We're on C. Whoa, I thought I asked for the City Clerk. Thanks, President. I guess City Clerk is too good to, to respond to my question. I'll take care of that later. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters. Defending the aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. With regard to C, D, E, B, and A, all of these uh, developments that, that, that are occurring, I just realized that they're, they're not for us. They're not for the average Newark resident. They're for the affluent. They're for the people, like the city clerk stated very clearly a couple of meetings ago, for the people with the money. So just, I don't know if this is an aside. It, 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 hopefully I can tie this in by the end. That is something that what Republicans do. They make sure that the people with the money keep the money and the people that don't have the money stay in their lane. And I'm starting to realize with regard to these developments, these two families and three families, this is something that I would expect a Republican party to do. Let's make sure the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. The rich stay rich, you know, keep that money flowing through Wells Fargo and, you know, Citibank. You got to keep that money flowing. And the poor stay flowing. You stay on public assistance. You stay on disability. And then we do, when we do uh, uh, cater to the regular Newark resident that, that is on a fixed income or below the income level for poverty, we're going to put you in a building. We don't want you to have a house. We're going to put you in a building so, so everybody could, could be like sardines. I'm going to make the reference again. La Amistad the friendship, <laughs> everybody be locked, you know, cozied up together where you can't really have your own privacy. You know, you can hear the other people doing what they do in their next apartment. That's something that the Republican Party would do. Make the, sure the people with the money keep their money. You know, the rich stay rich. Let's let the poor stay poor. And with regard to, I hope I'm tying this in properly, with regard to these fixtures where the people that are on fixed income, if we don't have access to it, like the city clerk said, the people with the money do. So is that something that I'm seeing? A Republican Party act from supposedly a democratic state, a democratic city, Republican actions? Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Thank you. One more speaker. Deborah Salt, the city of Newark, warrior for the people. Um, I would also like, and, and we said this several meetings ago, to ask for the uh, names 
of these entities that are getting these tax abatements. We requested this a while back, and today uh, Ms. Austin brought it up again. Not only we asked, again, your own colleague asked. So we're asking that we get these uh, names and information of these developers who you're giving this information to, because that's our right to know this so that we can evaluate what we're even saying to you. Um, and I love how, really, not really, but you know, being sarcastic, I love how you all do these tax abatements. And again, um, when we talk about entities like uh, these, these home, these shelters or NCC, um, Harmony House, and by the way, um, they did go there after the last time I spoke here, but they half asked it, which is what they do. Tore the wall open, saw the black mold in the wall, said they didn't have time to do all of the job. So they put the wall back together without doing a complete remediation. What sense does that make? And it's still leaking. See, I'm not one of those at least Negroes. Well, at least they did something. At least Massa gave us some water. I know it wasn't cold. No, 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 no. We deserve better, right? The superlatives. We deserve the better, best, most, highest. Not at least. Because what sense does that make? Because now you're going to have to go back, tear the wall open again, and redo the... Just do it right. The billions, the case of the missing billions in the city of Newark. Billions of dollars. And then the, and, and then the place is still leaking after all of that. So you just do enough to say that you did something. That's not enough. It is not acceptable. Because again, which one of you, which one of you in this administration is going to live like that? Not one of you. Not one of you. Thank God. You need to really thank God that I don't have the power because I'd pull every one of you in these streets. First, I'd make you live on the streets for two weeks and figure it out with nothing. Then I'd make you live in the conditions that you make the, the residents of the city live in. With billions. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> well, you know, if, <laughs> if I had the power, but you know. You know, y'all shouldn't feel threatened by that because, you know, as, as overseers of the plantation, right, you should be willing to sacrifice yourself to understand what the people are going through. Because Jesus himself said, you have not a high priest that have not suffered the things that you've suffered. And he is the Lord of glory. And he suffered what we suffer. And you are not willing to do that for the people that you're supposed to be governing. Clerk, no other speakers? No other speakers. Motion to close the public hearing and adopt. Council of the Home. Roll call. Commodore, absent. Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Councilman James? Absent. McCallum? Absent. Jack Iver? No. Yes. Osborne? Absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. Continue. D is an ordinance granting a five-year tax abatement to the two-family new construction at 351 Elm Street. Is there anyone present that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? I want a speaker appearing. And have y'all looked at it because it looks like they is they took the property and converted it from a two family to a four family. Anybody doing any oversight? Let me ask the councilwoman about tax abatement and 6688 Springsfield Avenue LLC. And Ms. Ladd wanting to give a 60 unit project that is not zoned for that. That's why the building is on Jones Street. It's an R3 for residential townhomes. How are you representing the people that opposed it and never brought it back to the Board of Adjustments? Nobody's following a process here. Tax abatement for Tony Gomes to have new development when on, Wy on Wycliffe Street he got a dilapidated building with handymen over seven stories high, 
throwing bricks off the building with no scaffolding and no oversight. Tony Gomes building. Where is the accountability? Where is the engagement of the people in the, in the community that are being negatively impacted by all that you approve of? Where's the engagement for the people? Where's the connectivity to say, this is not a good fit for this community? But anybody coming and handing you bags of money and from somewhere else, they have the privilege. How is it that the property two weeks ago, the guy come up here with 20 pieces of property to be redeveloped, one of the properties was already sold for 400000 How come you, the legislative body that's supposed to be the checks and the balances, ain't checking Ms. Ladd? It comes here with missing documents, misinformation. Now you're changing the order of things when we're supposed to get 20% from all development with the inclusionary zone. You ain't even listing how many units we getting. You know why? Because the Newarkers are not getting our fair share. Not the people. The ones in your clique are. They getting all the affordable, the low to moderate units. Bear Stadium, 4,200 units. We supposed to get 860 plus, only given 200. How is that fairness and equity? Speaker. Somebody's going to jail. 351 Elm Avenue, it says two family house. Google it. It's four doors there, upstairs and downstairs on both sides. That's not a two-family house. That is actually a four-family house. But I'm going to ask again, do any of you go by or do any of you get pictures of these places? Or, do, or can Allison Ladd come up here and explain the development and why this two-family home with four doors on it is now getting a five-year tax abatement? Or, can, or is there any developer or attorney in the room? that can actually explain this to us or why we have, may have changed it, went to a zoning board, came back. Because when you look at the picture, it's four doors there. That's not a two family home. Upstairs, downstairs, four doors is a duplex and it's, that's four families there. So I'm gonna ask again. I don't know what y'all, why, why y'all don't believe me or what I gotta put on my face, and maybe I gotta come up here and, and read a letter from the mayor after May 18th, I'll read that letter. Um, Cause y'all wasting our time. We have told y'all constantly. Last week, I was in, in Temple Hills, Maryland for one whole week. And when you come off in Union Station, and anybody that been down to DC, you know what's the first thing when you see you come out of Union Station, the Capitol. Right in front of you, bam. I said, you know what? I'm coming back down here. I'm coming to HUD. I'm telling on the housing authority. But I'm definitely coming back to tell on the city of Newark. Definitely. So if you want to check my train ticket, because I travel Amtrak from Newark to, to Temple Hills, get off at Union Station, catch an Uber over. But from, from here to North Carolina, we I work with deals with Raleigh, North Carolina. I don't even get to work with this people in my own city, but people outside of the city listens to me. Love me. See how I break the laws down. When I break them down to you, I just get next speaker. But you will learn after May 18th what all my hard work is gonna do. And trust me, some of you already been in there, whoever's connected to the house, they already been in your house. We already know they've been in that mail room. They coming. And when I come back, I'm gonna keep telling on y'all and I'm gonna expose some more stuff. 
Because Khalif ain't the only one. Alif, not Khalif, excuse me. Alif is not the only one that talks to the FBI. I am sick and tired of y'all. Go out there and see how many times I be standing in that line over there to get in the building. I don't want no special e exit. Go around the back of the building. Go through the under garage. Next speaker. I don't know if I'm gonna get these questions answered though. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go back to the lady. She said, uh, with these new constructions, do the owner have to live? Is, is it owner occupied for five years? Do y'all know? Are the rents gonna be uh, low income? rents to meet the needs of the residents? Do you all know? No? Don't know nothing, right? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing, right? So residents, I'm, I'm really talking to y'all, okay? Because I are you sick and tired, residents? Sick and tired of being sick and tired? Sick and tired of us coming up here, you know, uh, speaking up for you because we know they run it, they got y'all scared. They scan the seniors, scan anybody, but we ain't scared. And we sit up here and we put our lives on the line, you know, because they, they hate us. Look, you can see the hate, disgust in their eyes when, when we come up. So I'm just saying to the residents, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? You complain about high rents. You complain about that uh, Tillman comes up. They're kicking you off the job sites. They're doing photo ops. The water's still contaminated, and they're telling lies, still telling lies, still holding the lies. And I said to you, just go look at, go on the website to www.ewg.org and see what's in your water. And they continue to get on all politics is local and flex. Brass Barack, and when he get back in, he going to flex even harder. Talking about uh, he's, he did everything on his own accord. But then you see us in this street, okay, fighting like, like mad people about our water. And then all of a sudden money pops up. They got money for here. They got money from the port. They got money from Joey D. And they still not even giving us a breakdown on the last service lines and how they get them. No, 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 nothing. No transparency, no oversight. Just getting on all politics, local flexing. We can't get no oversight over tax abatements. And we come in here calling that we got a council job is to investigate legislate and appropriate and this is what you get so residents to be continued next speaker any other speakers i mean um, Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. This is supremely repetitively repetitive. Woo, I got that one all. Um, but again, again, the issue for Newark Matters, whoa, caught that. I read body language as well. Um, I, I got something for you, by the way. Um, made me, distracted me. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Who cares about if it's an abatement, if it's an exemption, if it's, I gave it to them free, give it to the free to the Newark residents. Give it to the free to the people who really need investment, who really need to have equity. Just get, I mean, 
the people of Noor, especially, like I said, I'm in that class, I'm in that category. I'm on a, I'm on a fixed income. I have no access. To, well, I've read about 200, 300 of these things. I have no access to these because I'm permanently disabled. I know some of you say, yeah, you're mentally disabled, right? Because I'm permanently disabled, I have no access to this property and I've been in this city all my life. When, when the young lady said she is the Spires, she is that I'm Newark. I'm Newark all the way around. I can go anywhere in this city from 12 o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, walk around fresh to death, Ralph Landau. Somebody gonna say, what's up, D cool? <laughs> in any event, the point that I'm making is all of these properties, this is the discriminatory. Corporate counsel, do you think I would have a class action for the people that are on fixed income, the people that are poor because we don't have access to any of these properties? Should I start a class action just to see the outcome? Because this is very discriminatory to the poor, superiorly discriminatory to the poor. Like the city clerk said, it's for the people with the money. So that would be my argument in court. This is for the people with the money. Not the poor people, not the people that have been here all their lives, struggling, trying to, trying to earn an honest wage or salary, whatever the case may be. It's not for us. It's for the people with the money, city clerk. It's all about the money, city clerk, isn't it? By the way, you don't have to worry about it because I think I looked it up. Your salary is $175,000 a year, so you clean. You clean, bro. I wish I had $175,000 just sitting in the chair and we can be, and sit in the citizens to barely hear you speak. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the age, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Thank you. Any other speakers? Mr. Clark, seeing none. No other speakers. Motion to close the public hearing and adopt. Council of the Whole. Roll call. Amador Accent. Crump. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. James. Yes. McCallum, absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. He is an ordinance granting a five year tax abatement to the two family new construction at 301 North 13th Street. Is there anyone present that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Speaker before us. Yes. <laughs> Fastest tax abatement. Originally from the North War, 1867. Everybody want to stay claim in, in Newark, because I tell you, I don't have that I was born in Newark story. But in 1867, William Singleton stepped foot and lived on Stone Street in Newark, New Jersey. William Singleton, which was my father, he was one of the first black families to ever, ever, ever be recorded in the census. So, Without further ado, I'm going to ask the council before this comes up that we create a singleton way and we'll provide the documents from um, the state of New Jersey, the census. We'll get them from the federal government because we all have those copies. We want to name something out of somebody about somebody. Let's name some some real heritage. And then I want to plaque under the estate and that he was one of the first people to travel here and make home here. But everybody else want to claim Newark and get a piece of Newark, and everybody want to do this. But little old Felicia Singleton, who comes and fights for the people whose grandfather was one of the first black families. When I say families, anybody in this city with the last name Singleton, we're family. We may be 10, three people down. 10, you heard what I said, 10, three people down. Yeah, but we family. We may be a little dysfunctional, you see me, but we family. He said, when I become mayor, you all become mayor. We all become mayor, which means we should have been family. We should have been that one Newark that was talking about. But yet and still, they saying the Spires is getting evicted. What happened, since we give out tax abatements, I'm going to keep saying tax abatements. What happened to those attorneys that Bloomberg brought over here that we supposed to be paying out not to exceed $150,000, is that right, Eric Pennington, to go represent our residents in the courts? Pre-eviction. What happened to those attorneys? 
Why aren't we going back to follow up on that? When William Singleton stepped foot in Newark, he had a purpose, and it was me. So for every resident, and you know where we, where we started out at? Prince Street, Elwood, over there in the North Ward. North Ward, Ramos, North Ward. I'm all from all over. I lived in the South, Central, East, where I am Newark. And when I say I am mayor, I am mayor. Because that one ain't going to be here long. I don't care if he roll his big bubble eyes at me. I, I could care less. Snoot his face up. That little one, he going first. May 18th ain't coming fast enough. But guess who will still be standing here? And guess who still will be on record? Felicia Austin Singleton, William Singleton on Stone Street. And when I give it to you, I would like a proclamation. And Thank, you. Thank you. Next speaker. Any other speakers? Yeah, Mr. President. Yes. I just want to state that, you know, I had the opportunity to um, visit this property a few weeks ago, not because of the abatement, but I happened to be in the area. Um, you know, I met a nice family that um, owns the property. I believe they're from Mexico. Um, and in 2021, the estimated taxes that were paid on this property were a little over $14,600 based on the documentation. So just want to put that on the record. Without it. Lisa Parker, sorry, I had the 301 North 13th Street um, incorrect, but y'all could go to my remarks on that. How is it that Al Sharpton and Nan got a $2.7 million building for $23,000 with a 30-year tax abatement? How is it that all of these developers, Kruger Scott Mansion, $900,000 property, sold at $90,000, and then got construction money, got 30-year tax abatement, and yet we have people in my community that created the community in the neighborhood. Taxes expired. Y'all didn't come up with no formulas. Gonzalez, I don't want you to open your mouth on this one. Um, nothing for the lifelong residents to preserve our communities. But you got everything for everybody else externally. All of that business, I become mayor, you become mayor. He is the worst disgrace because he's doing it to his own people. All the lives that he has hurt. But you got money for the people across the street to give them slush money, 700 and $4,000, 400000 from Investnoic, 300000 from the city for construction overages. How is it that these developers don't have to come here with their own money? How is it that I could drive anywhere in this city and see all the construction sites, whether it's in the South Ward, on the Central Ward, oh, Lord, the Central Ward, not one bait box, not one truck out there hosing the dust and debris that's flying into people's homes. How y'all, how y'all allow the developers to be so disrespectful to the people that are here and they don't live here. They drive in here this morning. I look downstairs in the basement, all them contractors coming in here getting their permits, don't none of them look like us. How can that be? And yet, you supposed to serve as public servants, we can't even get our BA over here to get off of the shopping network. That's how, that's how interested he's in and what we got to say. You're all gonna go. Y'all all going to go, and a lot of y'all going to jail. Any other speakers? One more speaker. Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters. 
defending the AIDS, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Again, I'm actually, you know what, maybe I should just get a recording because this is the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Well, hopefully the point is being driven. Anything that comes to Newark, any type of development that comes to Newark, any type, the Newark residents should be the first concern. Not Billy from Mendelham. Again, the developers should be, the requirements should be, I mean, priority, let me change the word. The priority should be Newark developers first, Black, Puerto Rican, and then minority women. I'm sorry. Woo! I'm about to get beat up when I walk outside. Women. <laughs> women. You know, stay within the city first. And then look for outside developers. And then the people that are supposed to get the property, again, let's start from the inside. Newarkers. Black, Puerto Rican. Medium income, whatever poor, median income, people that really that need to, to, to prosper and try to, try to get ahead of the game by owning some property. That way, you know, equity, whatever, um, you know, I'm not in my finance class, but, but you know, equity, build some equity, build some, some foundation economically. Th that should be the concern. Not, hey, let's make Newark look nice and pretty with all of these houses that might get blown down with the first hurricane that comes through, except no. But the thing is this, that should be the priority, the Newark resident. But like I said, you're operating like Republicans, in my opinion, in Newark Matters' opinion. Let's make sure that the affluent stay affluent. And we're gonna keep the, whoa, almost said it. We, we, we. We're gonna keep the blacks and Puerto Ricans in apartment buildings, you know, cause that's where they belong. They don't supposed to be property owners. But I, I'm pretty sure all of you own property. That's the funny, that, that's the ironic or coincidence. No, I, I think the word is ironic. I guarantee all of you own property. But you don't want people like me who own a fixed income to own property. Such as this two family new construction on 13th Street. By the way, I'm very familiar with that. That's, what, that's what's blowing my mind. That's what's making my head pop off and go over to the moon and to the stratosphere. Dion yeah, McCutcheon, Newark Matters. Defending the AIDS, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. I'm reading your body language. I got something for you. I'm just waiting for the time. Deborah Salt, the city of Newark. Um, Councilman Ramos, this is the one you said you went to, right? The one that we're talking about? I was in the area and I... Okay, yeah. So um, thank you for that, by the way. Um, these are the things that we ask about, you know, as far as the investigation. Um, so thank you for the information on the family that lives there. Um, it, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's so much. It really is. Um, because again, it, Ms. Parker talked about the bait boxes. I brought that up. Um, we're talking about the, the, the land, you know, nothing for Newarkers, right? And Dion said he should just come with a recorder and just play it over and over because it's, it's Groundhog Day, right? All over again. Every time we come up here, it's Groundhog Day. And the day never changes because the same process, the same thing we talk about. But at the same time, the Newarkers that are here, right, that are being run out of their own city, right? People are leaving because they can't make it here, or it's like, it, it, you know, our cops are leaving. Everybody's leaving, right? That's a problem, especially when um, you have a black and brown administration, right? Which means you're committing the genocide on your own people, and you know it, right? You actually know it, and you don't care, because as it's brought out, your salaries are ridiculous. 175, 260,000, 185, 85,000, 95, for part-time gigs, right? And then you, you don't do the job because clearly when we ask for the breakdowns, especially with the finance, you know, Guzman, you know, when he tries to do his job and give us a breakdown of the finances, um, he's always stopped. Oh, you're giving too much information. They don't need to know that. Why not? It was a budget hearing in November, three days, excruciating days. 
which there was not one number given for the billions of dollars that have come through this city. $170 million from Coca-Cola right before the pandemic to fix the flooding. Another $150 million, another $180 million down here for the, for the fixing Penn Station. And, and, and then we just received another $20 million in infrastructure, didn't we, like three months ago? So why are we taking out bonds to fix flooding on South Street when we've been given billions of dollars, which means we have enough money to fix everything in this city for housing, for people to have quality of life, for our water, for everything. But yet we don't have it because this is called recycled poverty, right? Because you have to have enough crime, you have to have enough homelessness, you have to have enough this, that. All of the disparities to get more money from the government. So you're continuing to get more money from the government off the backs of the people to do what with it? We don't see it. Stealing, building companies overseas and shipping companies and resorts and hotels and all of these things that are going on. And perhaps, you know, part of that went to the settlement with Willie Parker, $2.7 million for lawyers. But two fifty dollars doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, guys. The other speakers. <sighs> I just got this in the mail, huh? It's okay. Re-elect Mayor Rask and Annabelle, Ray Annabelle Ramos for North Ward. Keep the progress. Putting the public back in safety. Creating jobs for minority and women. Stronger rent control laws and enforcement. You see that? Co-signed that? <laughs> North Ward, crime risen under your watch. Creating jobs for minority and women. You got a tradeswoman here who helped build the union, but you creating jobs for minorities and women. Where that's at? Tillman just came in here. I'm here. Stronger rent control and enforcement. High rents to the sky for residents. I just got my smoke detector fix. After, where's the uh, Madam, Madam Chair heard the, the background in my building, North Ward. After how many years? They just fixed the smoke detector. <laughs> but they got a tax abatement, stronger rent control. And you know, I used to love you too, right, Ray Rose? Huh? You know, I, I backed you like 200%, right, Ramos? Well, I made a comment. And I said you need to get some testosterone, right? Testosterone, or, or, and you got offended, right? And you co-signing this stuff. And you know crime has risen in North Ward, right? And you know people getting tax abatements, right? my building, and you barely come there, right? Isn't that a shame? And you block me when I sent pictures, right? Didn't you block me? Don't say you didn't. Because <laughs> that'd be a bold-faced lie. Didn't you send the police? Ain't talking about to my door, abatement. Ramos. Excuse me. Complaining about, about tax abatements. Tax abatements. Uh, this is about tax abatements. So what you telling me? What not to speak about it? Personal with you gave a building a tax abatement. Okay, time is over. Next speaker. It's so are you. All right, next. There's no other speakers. Mr. McCutcheon, you already spoke. No, 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 no. You had your turn, John. He had his turn. Thank you. Hey, not the speakers, Mr. Clerk. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. You were coming to the podium. I apologize. Mr. Clerk. No other speakers. Motion to close the public hearing and adopt Council of the Whole. Roll call. Amador absent. Crump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. Resolutions? Resolutions. Resolution 7R2A is a authorizing resolution for the Department of Economic and Housing Development for a need for a housing project to determine whether the proposed project will meet an existing housing need within the city of Newark. B is a authorizing, ratifying authorizing resolution for the Department of Economic and Housing Development for a resolution of support to, to provide municipal council support for the submission of an LLC of an application for tax credits sought by the 81-93 Orange Street Urban Renewal LLC, the developer under the New Jersey Aspire Tax Credit Program to the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Council of the Whole through 7R to the Council of the Whole to adopt. Oh, oh. Amador, absent. Crump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum, absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent. Ramos? Yes. Present Quintana? Yes. 7R4A is a authorizing resolution for the Department of Finance for confirming a bond sale for $5 million. 7R5, for 7R4B is a authorizing resolution for the Department of Finance approving the loan and escrow agreement for replacement of water distribution mains project through 7R54B, Council of the Whole to adopt. Roll call. Mr. Mr. President? Yes. Before we do roll call, can we just get a, an excellent explanation, excuse me, from, um, I guess, Mr. Guzman? Mr. Guzman? Uh, both of these resolutions in front of you today are for the permanent financing of the water mains projects. They had previously been approved by this council and local finance board uh, for construction loan financing through the NJIB program. Uh, we are now going to permanent financing. Uh, and these resolutions are approve the sale of the bonds and to approve the, uh, the loan escrow document agreement. So that way the, the city can sell the bonds to the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank and close on them uh, earlier next month. And this was just recently approved by the uh, local no, finance board? No, these have been or? approved in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and the projects were authorized, and the city's uh, water and sewer department had been working on these projects. And the format in which it works, once they're approved, the city applies for temporary construction financing so that we slowly draw down from the, uh, the state's uh, infrastructure bank funds in order to get the project work done. Once we get to a certain percentage of completion, I believe it's 80% complete or above, we can qualify to permanently finance the total cost of the projects, obviously at favorable rates through the infrastructure bank, a portion of the, uh, of the 5 million will be, uh, will be forgiven through the infrastructure bank and the other portion is at the low to interest cost. Thank you. Okay, excuse me, you're out of order, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Please. my apologies. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Guzman. Uh, when you say favorable rate, what is that rate right now? Well, currently they're not as favorable as they were a year and a half ago. Um, currently now certain market rates for uh, long-term bonds are in the four and a half to five percent range, whereas 18 months ago they were at the one and a half to two percent range. And another one of the reasons why we're permanently financing is it's, you know, the rates aren't going to get any cheaper. So we're taking advantage of the rates as low as they possibly are. Thank you. Another question. Rob call, Mr. Clark. Amador absent. Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum absent. McIver? Yes. Osborne absent. Ramos? Yes. President Quintana? Yes. To the, to the added starter page. 7R8A is a whole harness for an indemnification agreement for the Police exam preparation at the Newark schools. 7R 
8B is a resolution of waiving special event application fees for the Mother's Day Festival event on April the 30th. President. Mr. President. Yes. Yes, Council Wright. Yeah, I need to make a correction on the date for um, 7R8A. It should be uh, Monday, May 16th. May 16th. I'm sorry, Monday. Um, May 23rd. Then let's do them separately. Let's do um, 8A, moved by Councilman Ahmed Ramos. No, I have a Councilman second. Ramos. I'll check on it. Second by Councilman Gonzalez to amend. Roll call. Amen. Amador, absent. Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum? Absent, McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent, Ramos? Yes. President, Quintana? Yes. Now, Councilman, you, the date is? Monday, May 23rd. Monday, May 23rd. Vote it. Same mover and second to adopt as oh, amended? Same mover and second, and second by Councilman Gonzalez. Move, a roll call. Amador, absent, Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum, absent, McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent, Ramos? Yes. Present, Quintana? Yes. B, the resolution waiving the special event application fees for the Mother's Day Festival, Saturday, April the 30th, 2022. Councilman Quintana wishes to move. Second? Second. Second. Second by okay. Absent Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum? Absent McIver? Yes. Osborne? Absent Ramos? Yes. And Quintana? Yes. Back to the agenda. We are on page eight communications. 8A is an ordinance granting a 20 year tax abatement to the, to the B8 McCarter owner urban renewal. LLC for a project to de demolish and underutilize building and construct a new class A industrial warehouse building consisting of approximately 106,000 square feet of warehouse space, 6,000 square feet of office space and associated parking located on property commonly known as 2107-2123 McCarter Highway and 2125-2143 Carter Highway. Council of the Hold to advance to first. Mr. Mr. President. Yes, Council Ramos. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the um, attorney representing this project, um, Mr. Chris Murphy. He set up a meeting with our office. There are currently two warehouse projects under construction in that site. This is uh, below the old seat and leather um, location, and, and across the street, there is a uh, Abandoned, uh, formerly abandoned city owned property that's now being converted into a regional space for enterprise rental car. So there, there is um, some emergence in an old industrial area. And this warehouse project is actually, I believe, the smaller of the two that's going to be built there. You know, the sites have already been demolished. If you drive by there um, right now, you see demolition going on. So with your permission, I'd like to advance and adopt. I'll second that. Roll call. Well, this is to advance and adopt as 6FA. Amador, absent Trump? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. James? Yes. McCallum, absent McIver? Yes. Osborne, absent Ramos? Yes. Yes. Mr. President, the ordinance adopted on first reading today will be advertised in accordance with law. And a public hearing will be held at the regular council meeting of May 4th, beginning at 12.30 p.m. here in the council chamber. We are now in the public speaking portion of the meeting. This is a 30-minute period in which speakers will be given three minutes to speak. When your name is called, please state your, when you come forward, please state your name and address for the record. You will be given three minutes to speak. You will see the timer in front of you. We'll begin counting down your time as you begin speaking. 
When you reach the two minute mark, I will, you will have one minute remaining for a summation. And when you reach the three minute mark, there will be an audible sound indicating that your time has expired. Okay. Okay, don't start because um, I'm not I'm not announcing my address since the developers don't won't can't get their name and address on, so I'm not announcing my address. Um, Miss Singleton, Miss Singleton, would you just hold on one moment? Uh, one, two, three. Councilman James, are you still online? Gonzalez isn't gone. He's not gone. Councilman Gonzalez is still here. Still here. His, his stuff is here. Yes, yeah, he's still, still here. here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Singleton. I'm still here. Mr. B.A., you don't want to hear what we got to no, say? No, no. Yeah, Alicia. Hear what we gotta say so you could Excuse me. Let's go. Start the clock. Go ahead, Miss Singleton. Please. Good afternoon, Felicia Austin Singleton. First, I want to let y'all know that these hallways out here, y'all want to give out tax abatements. These hallways out here are totally dark. We need some new lighting in these hallways. It is ridiculous. You walking down the hallway and it just looks so dark and gloomy. That's why your, your staff don't have any morale. Ain't no nothing cheery about the place. Ain't nothing going on good for them. It's ridiculous. The ventilation, I hope y'all know that this ventilation in here, when that flag move, we got more ventilation when, when we sing, um, Whitney, when Whitney sing than, than anything going on right now, okay? Again, we pay for attorneys, $150,000 not to exceed so that our residents will not be getting evicted. And now we're talking about illegal evictions in the Garden Spires. We need to fix that. Somebody's going to jail. I'm gonna keep saying that. And if you don't believe me, you just wait because my Mother's Day gift is gonna be so pretty. I'm gonna have me on a red jacket with some tan and some pink. Y'all gonna see it. I'm gonna be looking sharp. Y'all just remember what I told y'all. Patrick, Patrick Council, Louise Roundtree, and Lewis Weber. If y'all do not take a leave of absence and it don't come off, if I see y'all in any more pictures on Facebook, that y'all on company time promoting y'all promoting y'all election at funerals, church service, I don't care what it's at. If it's during daylight and you on company time and you have not resigned, you going to jail because I'm going to report you to the, to the um, Department of Justice of Elections. But whoever. All of them. Then y'all came up here, and I, I love the speech that O'Hara gave, but let's be clear, Newark. We need to also think about the flight attendants that's coming out of Newark, the doctors that's in the, 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 that's in the operating rooms. We also need to think about the nurses, not only police officers. Half of this um, medicinal weed that y'all got don't last an hour, trust me. I'm, I'm telling you, they don't even last an hour. You got to go out there to get the real good goods to last for, for about three or four hours. So y'all need to stop worrying about what these police officers are doing off on their own time. Ain't nobody saying nothing to no council person that may, may have had a drink before they came up in here. Did that cloud your judgment to say yes? Because if so, we need to do a lot of revoting up in here. He said, when I become mayor, we all become mayor. Well, I'm waiting for the opportunity on May 10th so I can become mayor, so my voice could be heard, so some action could be done. And if nobody wants to stand up here and listen to Felicia Austin Singleton, just take your name off the ballot as of May 10th. This way you, can, you don't have to be here because I'm going to be here. I have a right. I'm a resident. Y'all have a right to listen. Thank you so kindly, Mr. Pennington, for coming back. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello. I don't see a quorum here. Where Ramos go? He's in the restroom. Okay, I'll wait. Supposed to have a quorum when you're speaking, right? When you're voting, when you're speaking. Quorum. No. He's here. That's not necessary. All right, all right. Thank you, Ramos, for washing your hands. Not everybody do that. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Parker. Folks. 
when you see this picture right here, when this mailer comes to you, the central ward and the mayor, look at it as a wanted poster. Because somebody is under federal investigation. I want to say this to uh, Mr. O'Hara that came in here to talk about the ordinances and what y'all are putting forth for the police and fire regarding cannabis. And I said it to him outside. Why are you so concerned with cannabis when we had two firemen, one that OD, OD'd on heroin and shooting up in a fire station? Why are we concerned with, with cannabis when you got heroin in public safety? How is it that you, the mayor comes and says he's recruiting for, for police officers, but they don't have to take a civil service exam? How is that possible, union? And what about the people that were already, that have taken a test? for civil service. There's a waiting list. What happened to those people? And let me talk about you political whores. And I'm talking about Roundtree. Why was you at, the, at Science High on the day of the election pandering to parents while they had a college fair? Why are all of these people from the point that they got certified have not taken a leave of absence. Where is the oversight and the accountability for all of the staff members that's supposed to be on their job, but them and their staff members is out here campaigning, violating the Hatch Act? You political whores. Why are you calling people up, intimidating them, because they didn't like you? and they exercise their democratic right to sign a petition, support, and vote for who they want to. No, because you are no longer a slave. A slave to the people that are here that don't represent your interests. Never have. What they say, Central Ward, we can't get no phone call. Nobody come to do no servicing. We get nothing but attitude. Sean McCray, C1, Central Ward, puts community first, man of integrity, maturity. Council President? Yes, yes. I just want to make a comment because um, the speaker that just got finished speaking mentioned about someone being underneath federal investigation. Um, and I've seen this too going like back and forth online as well from some of the regular speakers here um, that come to the meeting. I just want to be very clear. I'm not underneath any federal investigation. I have not been uh, contacted by federal authorities. Federal, uh, federal authorities have never been to my home. Um, if you have paperwork, all of these things that people are out here saying, please feel free to share. But as I stated, I have never been contacted by federal authorities, nor have federal authorities been to my home where I live here in the city of Newark, nor any of my family homes. Um, someone mentioned about my mom's home as well. So I just want to put that on the record because a lot of people out here throwing out saying they have the facts and the fact is I have never been contacted by federal authorities. And as far as services for the Central War, I am definitely, definitely here to service the Central War residents. If anybody has any concerns, anything that I can do for them specifically, please feel free to contact my office. We're available 24-7, anytime, via email, via telephone. A lot of times people get up here, they hate you personally, and that hatred personally pours out, and then they use other residents to do that as well. It's unfortunate that the speaker for four years has come to this meeting and literally yes yelled, complained, talked about me, which is definitely her, per, her personal right to do that. I have no problem with that. But personal hatred, this place has no space for personal hatred. So I'm, I, I really do feel sorry. I'm going to continue to pray for the speaker that came up and continues to talk about me all the time. But at the end of the day, I want to put the facts on the table. I am not under any underneath any federal investigation that someone has come to me, any federal authorities has presented to me, or has been to my home. Thank you. Next speaker.
Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the aged, disabled, homeless, poor, and defenseless, committed to ending evictions and homelessness in the city of Newark. Well, actually, period. This issue with regard to marijuana is, is, is baffling to me because like, like the, I think they said, uh, Mr. O'Hara, I don't know his title. He said it stays in your system for 30 days. So, and then he said there's some special tests that you have to take. So why not just take that off the list? Why not just take it off the list period as something that you can be penalized, something for which you can be penalized? Just take it off the list. Therefore, you don't have to worry about it. If you're smoking weed, if you, let's, wait a minute, let me back up, rewind. Let's assume your doctor prescribes it. You get pulled over, whatever, and, and you know, you say, listen, my doctor prescribed this because my ailment, or whatever it is, it, it needs this. So if your doctor prescribes it, it's, it's just like if you get a prescription for whatever, that the thing that, 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 that gets rid of pain that people got addicted to. So just get it off the list of being something that you could be penalized, for which you could be penalized. Just get it off the list. I'm gonna get to the election, the upcoming election. Woo! There's a, there's, I'm gonna talk to you directly, Council Member at Large Gonzalez. You would like for us to vote for you after you called us, make it very clear, you people. And then the next week you came back and said, these people, we have to teach these people how to use garbage cans. What? Because I couldn't get in the East Ward to see the New York Giants. I had to walk 200 feet to use the bathroom? What, you wanted, to, what, you wanted us to city to call the Uber? Or Lyft to take you to the bathroom, bro? I felt like a second class citizen. Really? So, <laughs> I'm a city councilman. I'm the councilman at large. And they said that they thought that you were Eddie Osborne. You said you've been up here for 16 years and you are not recognized as who you are. They think you're Eddie Osborne and you want me? You want us to vote for you? You're not even recognized in the East Ward? I could have gotten there. I would have walked up. Somebody would say, what's up, d -Cool? I'm like, yo, what up? Listen, what's going on? What's the deal? Dig, man, I need to get in here. Okay, peace. Go ahead in, man. Come on, man. You're d -Cool, man. Get in. You couldn't even get in the East Ward? You've been up there for 16 years? Are you kidding me, bro? And you, you want to represent us? You're not one of us. You know, you've never been in the dollar store downtown. I've never seen you on Broad Market. I've never seen you in ShopRite. You don't even know there's a McDonald's downtown, do you? Dion McCutcheon, Newark Matters, defending the AIDS, disabled, homeless, poor, and defense. Next speaker. <laughs> Deborah Salter, City of Newark. Um, so to the residents, right? Um, I've, speak, I've spoken with some people. First of all, let me talk about one thing that one professional spoke to me about, because they were trying to plead the case for the tax abatements. You know, there were a lot of city lots, and you know, at a time when we couldn't get people to develop. Okay, if you want to talk about eons ago, fine. But this stuff that's being done now is not that. Let me just say that. This is not that. We don't, we don't have to pimp ourselves out for somebody that's gonna come here anyway. Like when you know you got the goods, the people gonna come for the goods. Now what are you gonna do about it? You gonna give it away or are you gonna make them work for it? That's what I'm saying to that. So this upcoming election, so people are saying, well, what am I supposed to do? It's only certain names on the ballot. So here's the thing. You don't have to do it just cause it's in your face. If you look at your ballot, the sample ballot that you receive, at the very bottom, you'll see a write-in section. That's where you can clearly write in a person's name that you want to see on the ballot, that you want to see in the race. Look at your ballot. You'll see a cross, it'll say mayor, it'll say council person, council person at large. Do not simply vote for what you see on that paper. Because again, I'll tell you, so look at the results of the last eight years. 
and ask yourself, what has been done by these individuals to make my life better? And if you do not have a clear answer, then it is time for you to change the people that are on that ballot. Again, that's what the write-in boxes are for, okay? So for at large, like uh, uh, former Mayor James brought out the other day, like 40 different people have been disqualified, right? Many of us were running for positions. So imagine the arrogance, the anger, the misogynistic uh, behavior and things that have been going on, the tyranny, Imagine, if you put these same people back in office a third time, can you imagine the level of heat and tyrannical behavior that you're going to receive? Because first of all, you had the audacity to go up against them. So I'm telling you, you better wake up. Not voting is not an option, because when you don't vote, you vote for the one you don't want in the seat. When you don't vote, you vote for the one that you don't want in the seat. People have bled, died, been arrested, busted in the head for this right for us to vote. Look at the ballot, go down to the bottom where you have the write-in boxes, and write in individuals that you know in your community who are doing the work at large. People are naming you. They're saying, but they're on the ballot, they've been here. Okay, but, okay, so you've been drinking poison for eight years. You gonna continue to drink poison once the doctor tell you it's ruining your heart? You're going to continue to do the same thing. You're eating fat back for eight years. You got fat around your heart and fluid. The doctor said, if you keep eating fat back, you're going to die. You're going to keep eating the fat back or you're going to clean up? Any other speakers? One more speaker. I guess we talked to the residents, and I hope they're listening. So, Newark moving forward. That's what this flyer say, right? Please keep the progress. And I keep saying, and we keep saying, Newark's moving forward for them and not for Newarkers. What's moving here is ethnic cleansing and gentrification intensified. And the real reason is because of y'all. And the real reason is because Ras Baraka has become the most popular politician, our black oppressor, because he's now connected to the enemy of our people and he's doing their agenda. But let's talk about what's happening for Norkers. Newark residents, I just gave you, I just let you hear what's happening at the Garden Spires, right? Priced out through high rents, landlords denying their Section 8 vouchers, homes are being foreclosed on our seniors and the homeowners. This administration is to build 16,000 units for low-income residents. Bassett Terrace, they built public land, market rate housing, Terrell Homes, market rate, school board election, votes, they won the election with no 30% uh, uh, of votes not counted. Where did that happen at? No mayoral or Westward debate equals no vote. Residents, do you hear me? No mayoral debate, no Central Ward debate equals no vote. No low income housing, no jobs at a livable wage equals no vote. And I want to ask y'all a question, especially the darkies. What's your position on reparation? What's your position? If you can't answer that, then you got a serious problem, especially with the racial, economic disparity that's happening against our people. What is your position? Can you answer that? You got feedback on everything else, Ms. MacGyver. 
What is your position on reparation? What is your position? Council yeah, President. Then your, your time Council is Council President. Yes. Uh, I don't, I, I just want to, number one, I just want to, um, the darky comment, I'm not sure what that, what, what that even means because, I mean, it sounds like a racial slur to me, but I will respond, Ms. Bunami. I'm happy that you mentioned about the reparations. This council not too long ago underneath the leadership of uh, Councilman Crump actually passed a resolution supporting a reparations task force for the state of New Jersey. Um, literally, I'm sure Councilman Crump can elaborate if he likes, but definitely we support reparations here in, this, here in the city and the state of New Jersey. Are uh, you still you you talking? I'm still yes. trying to respond to. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. That was that was my comment about the reparations comment. Mr. President. Excuse me. Can you, please, Mr. Mr. President, President. Seeing no other speakers, council the whole to adjourn. Council Mr. President, Crump, I just wanted to say a couple adjourn things. Hold, hold on a second. Let me just do two things. Number one, uh, I, I, I I agree with Councilwoman McIver that darky comment was uncalled for. And, and really disappointing. Number one, I want to say that on the record. Number two, I also want to say that- Excuse me. I, I believe uh, Ms. Alston Singleton makes a good point regarding the uh, five-year tax abatements and whether we can put those names on there. Um, I think Daniel's Law certification is given up front. Well, I know it's given up front, so we know whether that name could be on the actual resolution or not. So I think we should look at that and try to put that on there. If there's a reason why, and I don't know the reason why, I'd appreciate it if it can be given to us in writing. All right, Mr. 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 President, um, before we adjourn, I'd just like to make a correction. The ordinance that was adopted on first reading, the public hearing will be held on May 11th. There won't be enough time for it to happen on, on, the, May, on the May 4th meeting. 11, started. So the hold to adjourn? Before we adjourn, before we adjourn, I, I, Council President, I just wanted to bring two um, uh, items to the Council's, um, which the Council knows about some because I've had conversations with you all about it. But we have some serious concern regarding polling sites um, here in the city, um, some polling sites that were changed um, since the last election prior to the school board election. We had gotten a lot of complaints from residents regarding their polling site changing, which literally put them way out of distance to where they were going to vote. Um, specifically, downtown residents, they their polling site was mainly changed to um, Barringer High School, which is a hike from all the way downtown to Barringer High School. In addition to the polling site that was originally at 1060, those senior citizens are now being told that they have to walk all the way to the Prudential Center to go vote. That is an issue. Um, and I'm not sure how other council members feel about that, but changing those polling sites, th that's just, th that really is starting to look like voter suppression to me with folks having to travel that far to go vote, especially if you're a senior, you have to leave out of 1060 and walk all the way to the Prudential Center, as well as those residents that live downtown. Residents, we just should have never changed their polling site um, to that location. I would ask that this council, on behalf of this council, we write a letter to the clerk, um, the Excess County clerk, as well as the Board of Commissioners about that, expressing our, our uh, concern regarding those voters' voting sites being changed, because that definitely is a huge issue. It's especially in the eve of us up against the municipal election that's coming up and residents literally have to travel that far to go vote. That is a problem. Yeah, Mr. Dr. President, Ramos. Yeah, I, I believe that we should call for, I know the clerk is part of those meetings with the board of elections, but they, the board, the commissioner of uh, elections at the county should come before this body and discuss the impact of um, congressional redistricting and how it's causing some of the shifts that Councilwoman MacGyver discussed. You know, uh, last week we were made aware that four of our election districts, three of which are actually really busy districts, are going to be consolidated into two polling locations. So I know because of congressional redistricting, um, every ward in the city is going to have different impacts. You know, I agree that imposing these changes right before a municipal election is is a uh, you know recipe for chaos and confusion amongst our voters 
And um, I, I believe that we should have Ms. Vanessi here or some other representative so they could do a presentation before the whole council and explain to us why these changes needed to be made. Mr. Clerk, you know, the, uh, I concur with both council members. Um, folks at 1060, I've, I've gotten calls. Some of the folks are in wheelchairs. When they would come down this elevator, go down to the voting site, and that was it. But, you know, we, know, we understood with the epidemic what happened at the building. They didn't want people coming in. But it's not fair that there's a machine there at 1060 that belongs to the central ward. And, it's, and, the, and 1060 sits in the, in the east ward. So how is that possible that folks, it's in, it's, it's, I've gotten hundreds of calls from the, they're saying, look, we're not going to come out because, you know, wheelchairs, people, and then there's not the transportation to bring people in wheelchairs. They feel comfortable voting there. Whoever came up with these decisions did not include, uh, think about, could have been their grandmother, their mother, or somebody in their family. It's an inconvenience. And to tell somebody to go to Barringer High School, you know, that's across town. So, again, I, I concur with my colleagues. We need to bring these folks here and make them accountable what their decisions are. We will. Now, I just, I just want to add, it needs to happen as soon as possible. Yes. Yes. Because the election is literally less than 10 days. Well, it's a, getting closer to 10 days away from the election. And here we are talking about them changing polling sites. In addition, I just want to add, I had the um, opportunity to sit on, and you know this, Mr. Clerk, because you were there, to sit on the conversations and the hearings regarding some of the changes of Central Ward districts to North Ward districts, which one being in question was District 45. At that meeting, we agreed that District 45 will go from Central Ward to North Ward. In that agreement, that was going to happen immediately from what I understood. However, Fast forward to school board election, District 45 was still considered to be the central ward. And after I spoke to the clerk, Exus County clerk to be exact, they said that 45 will change to the North Ward for the May municipal election. How is that even possible? How does that make any sense? How can some how can one district two weeks apart, elections two to three weeks apart, one election you're the north, you're the central ward, and then the next election you're the north ward. The voters don't even know what's going on over there. They were not notified. Nobody contacted them. They're confused. Rather, they're the central or the north. They don't know who they're going to vote for up until literally we're, we're on the eve of election. It is just poorly planned. It's poorly executed. And it, it really is disappointing for residents that need to vote here in the city. And we need to have them... It, we, they need to get a letter today, not waiting to give them a letter, and they need to appear before us as soon as possible because that it just it's just really bad. It looks really bad on behalf of our city, and we it just should not be allowed. People should not be uncertain where they're voting, especially in a city that already has low voter turnout, and then we have issues where where they're voting at and what districts they're in. It's just poor. I can't sit up here and sugarcoat that and say that it's okay because it's not. And I'm just as pissed as my residents because people should not have to go through that to exercise their right to vote. Yeah, Mr. President, with, related to the Councilwoman's point, after the meeting that the board voted on that change, that change takes effect by law immediately. When the notifications went out, they still listed residents in that district as part of the central ward which is incorrect. And we did reach out to Ms. Vanessi's office because for the school board election, the same candidates are in the ballot all over the city, but leading up into the May 10th election, you're going to have a lot of confusion with residents who live in that district. So, Mr. Clark, you need, and, and again, we have representation, Mr. Clerk, you're, you're a member of that body. And, and I think you need to articulate some of those concerns for us as well. Mr. President, we have, I have not seen the polling places list. I'm surprised that, that the councilwoman knows where they are. I've not seen them yet. And you know that, that means that we're creating confusion because voters have received the sample ballot for the, for the school board election and the sample ballot for the municipal election, and they're telling them two different things. So we got to get to a good talk with this one. And I just I mean, want to say your office, Mr. Clerk, sent out a list of polling yeah. sites this morning for the May election. Ms. Crawford did, sent out a list of polling sites, came from your office this morning. Oh, so do we listen to 
Dr. Jose, I haven't seen the list yet. Can we get this? Can we get correct this? Get this corrected? Uh, I mean, you. I mean, Ms. Vanessa. Well, I'll I'll tell the ten people at ten sixty to dress. Call your office then. I mean, because I mean it's an inconvenience for seniors. I mean, they. I mean, is this is? I I never heard of something as such. That senior, there's there's a polling machine at ten sixty. And the seniors from 1060 have to go to Prudential to go vote in a wheelchair. I mean, it's just it's not right. These are handicapped. There's a lot of handicapped seniors in those buildings. Yes. We did a roll call. Roll call to, to adjourn. Gonzalez. Yes. MacGyver. Yes. Ramos. President Quintana. Councilman James? Yes. Yeah.